I'm not going to lie to you guys. It has been a struggle today to get these videos out. For some reason, I have just been dragging all day long. I don't feel 100%. Now, to the dismay of the one or two Fauci fanatics that are left out there who still listen to the Grand Lizard, I do not have the COVID. I've had the COVID twice already. That's not what this is. I'm just feeling, I don't know, I'm just feeling tired. I feel nauseous. I'll probably feel better tomorrow. I had actually intended on taking the rest of the afternoon off just to lay around and rest to get over this thing, but a story came across my news feed that I could not ignore. You guys know, I never pass up an opportunity to highlight another example of the woke turning on the woke. One of the many problems in the social justice movement, besides the fact that if you want to involve yourself, you subject yourself to being associated with some of the nastiest people in the world. I say this all the time, but I never show you examples. Let me take a brief moment to show you what your average social justice warrior looks like. Take a look at this beauty here. I'm unsure of the proper pronouns for this individual, so we're just going to default to she, her pronouns. But the facial expression you see on the left, that is the face of a social justice warrior who has just seen the Fauci cucumber for the first time. The facial expression on the right, that's the face of an SJW after a good round of Fauci fucking. Look at me, I'm vaccinated. My young people out there who think it's cool to be a woke dumbass, let me show you what you'll look like if you continue this bullshit as you grow up. This right here, this is what the woke consider to be a beautiful woman. <sighs> I had the solution to the rising crime problem in major cities across America. To hell with threatening criminals with life without parole. If someone commits a crime in Chicago, force them to look at Rachel Levine. That's the real punishment. Crime will be eliminated. But anyway, one of the biggest problems in social justice, it is impossible to continuously meet the standards. For one, the standards are constantly shifting and without warning. One day, you're a valued member of Woke United Methodist. The next, you find yourself locked out of the church door, standing outside with Rex Chapman, begging to be let back in. They didn't kick Rex Chapman out because he violated the woke commandments. They revoked his membership because he's an embarrassing loser. Believe it or not, even the woke have standards when it comes to consistent failure. But don't worry. Don't you worry. Bamani Jones, he's still a card-carrying member. Right now, FIFA is learning the same tough lesson that Rachel Nichols learned last summer. There is no loyalty in the woke movement. It doesn't matter how much money you contribute to the useless. It doesn't matter how many sensitivity seminars that you force your employees to attend. It doesn't matter if you promote the fight to end mythical racism. None of that shit matters. The expectation is perfection. 100% compliance. Of course, there's not one person or organization that can meet these ridiculous standards. In the history of mankind, there's only been one man to lead a perfect life. There's only been one man that was able to meet the standard. The social justice warriors of his time nailed him to a cross anyway. These people will always find something wrong with you. And if they can't find something wrong, they'll just make it up. March 2021, FIFA announced that they were joining the fight to end discrimination. We are embracing our responsibility to virtue signal to the 8% of the population who achieve an erection at the site of Leah Thomas. FIFA implemented a program to make the organization more diverse, more inclusive, more equity driven. Oh, 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 there's the magic E word again. I just love me some equity. Let's push for equal pay and make everyone's pay equally low. They embarked on a campaign to show how committed they were to the cause. Just look at this picture. You see, FIFA, they included a black kid. This is proof that we are diversity driven. The only thing they're missing in that picture is the non-binary. I actually asked FIFA about that. I asked FIFA about it. They said that they were unable to find anyone in the world that was born without a gender. Now take a look at some of the anti-discrimination measures that will be implemented at the World Cup. Mandatory diversity training. The hiring of anti-discrimination match observers. Um, 
Okay. What the fuck is that? Is that a group of woke shitfucks sitting in every section of the stadium looking for something to offend them? You get the point, though. FIFA is complying with all the demands of the useless. They even showed their support for the first openly gay British soccer player in over 30 years. <sighs> Here we go again. Another monumental first. History in the making. I don't know about you guys, but I get so excited about first. Last month, we talked about the girl who wanted to become the first woman in Major League Baseball. At least she was a real woman and not a wannabe like Leah Thomas. Speaking of Leah Thomas, he was the first man to win a women's championship in swimming. Oh, another historical first. There was nothing historical about that bullshit. You know what would be historical? You know what would be a true first? That's an actual achievement? How about this be the first season the WNBA actually makes a fucking profit? All you social justice warriors in the WNBA, how about you make history by doing that? Jake Daniels. Jake Daniels is a 17-year-old British soccer player. He plays for Blackpool. He announced to the world earlier this week that he was gay. I don't mean to be anti-gay here, but isn't this whole thing kind of played out? Aren't we past the whole coming out party deal? I don't understand the point of announcing your sexuality to the world. If that's really a thing, how come straight people don't do it? I'm going to start a trend right now for all us straight people. I mean, after all, we're living in an inclusive era, right? How come the LGBT get to host all the coming out parties? Let's start coming out parties for straight people, or what the woke call cisgender. I, KC, I want to announce to the world that I am not a Fauci fucker. I'm not a cucumber newcomer. I like women. So Jake Daniels, he announces to the world that he's gay, and the only people that care, the woke media, immediately begin the celebration. It was your typical community circle jerk on Twitter. Hand lotion for all. In the name of inclusion, FIFA, they tweet their support for Jake Daniels. It was actually kind of a strange way to show support, to be honest with you. If you want to be a true social justice warrior, you should have typed up a press release informing the media that you have officially invited Jake Daniels to the woke worshiping of the oak tree. Instead, FIFA pulls a couple of quotes from Jake Daniels and includes a nice little feminine emoji because nothing shows your LGBT support like a girly emoji. I guess, I guess it's the thought that counts. I mean, at least FIFA acknowledged Jake Daniels in his courageous announcement. However, they quickly learned, they quickly learned it was better to keep their Twitter fingers in their own ass. This one simple tweet, meant to be a show of support for Jake Daniels, immediately sent LGBT activists into convulsions. This is hypocrisy! This is anti-gay! Numerous LGBT groups from around the world, they are blasting FIFA through social media and the mainstream media. And you know what? They actually have a point. This is the reason sports leagues should stay out of politics. It is damn sure the reason sports should remain as far away from the woke movement as possible. FIFA is in violation of the most important woke commandment. Commandment number one. Thou shalt not commit discrimination or align yourself with any group or country that discriminates. The previous World Cup was held in Russia. FIFA was actually forgiven for that sin. Back in 2018, the world wasn't awakened to racism and discrimination yet. So they could be given a pass for that. However, the World Cup later this year taking place in Qatar. Unlike England or America where you're allowed to shove your sexuality in someone's face, where you can tell people you want to teach their children the proper way to make sweet love to the sexy vacuum cleaner. Over in Qatar, you have the right to be gay. You just don't have the right to admit it. You can fly your rainbow flag in Qatar if you have a death wish. Being a member of the LGBT community in Qatar is punishable by death. 
Last month, one of the senior officials in Qatar, he gave a stern warning to people planning to attend the World Cup. He said, demonstrate your LGBT views in a society where it's accepted. The message, rather clear. Don't come over here with your bullshit. Members of the LGBT community, they're upset that they won't be able to fly their rainbow flags at the World Cup. But senior officials in Qatar said, we are doing this for your protection. They're worried private citizens will attack people with rainbow flags. Hmm. How ironic. Now, this obviously pissed off social justice warriors, but it's rather ironic. Julia Ert, a member of some international LGBT group, she said so-called protections are used as smoke screens to cover human rights violations. Hmm. The same people who want to suppress free speech here in America in the name of protection, the same people who want to protect you from disinformation, when the responsibility of protection is turned against them, when they experience their own rights of expression being eliminated, they get pissed off about it. Huh. Funny how that works. Another case of rules for thee, not for me. One of the officials in Qatar, he actually said something that we have been saying here on the channel for years now. Now, I'm not going to sit here and attempt to pronounce his name. It's like five words, and the only word I understand and can pronounce is Abdullah. But he made the point that people are traveling to Qatar later this year to watch the World Cup. They're not buying tickets. They're not traveling to the country to be preached to about LGBT rights. They're coming to watch soccer, not be bombarded with non-binary shit fucks. Like I said, FIFA is learning the same lesson Rachel Nichols learned, a lesson that's not being taught at Woke Youth. They like to entice people with the promise of inclusion, but that is an illusion. There is no inclusion. There is no loyalty in the Woke movement. There's only 100% compliance. But let me know what you think. The woke turning on FIFA. I mean, it was bound to happen at some point. Are you surprised? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.